GraphQL is a query language for APIs that introduces an efficient and flexible approach to data retrieval and manipulation compared to traditional REST APIs. Unlike REST, GraphQL allows clients to precisely specify the data they need in a single query. In this video, I'll explain what is GraphQL and why is it important, covering the fundamental concepts of GraphQL schema, popular ways you can develop GraphQL apps, some of its advanced features such as subscriptions, and how to compare it with popular API development options such as REST, with some real-world examples of GraphQL in use. So, let's get started. A REST API might have an endpoint that returns all of the data for a user, even if the client app or developer only needs a few pieces of data. This can be inefficient, especially if the user has a lot of data. With GraphQL, you can request only the specific data you need. For example, the developer could query the API for the user's name and email address, but not their address or phone number. Imagine a library full of books. You can go to the library and ask the librarian for a specific book. Or you can browse the shelves and see what's interesting. Traditional APIs are like libraries in that they allow developers to request data. However, traditional APIs are not as flexible as GraphQL. For example, if you want to get the title and author of a book, you would have to make two separate requests to a traditional API. One request for the title and another request for the author. And so, if title, author, and publisher are different resources in REST, then you will need to make multiple calls to get all of the data. For example, you might have the following resources, authors and publishers. Now to get the author and publisher of the book, you would need to make two separate calls, a get call for authors and a get call for publishers. However, if author and publisher are contained in a single resource, then you can get them all in single call. You can use get request in REST to get the author and publisher of a book by passing the book ID in the request. And the response will contain both the author and publisher if the data is available. For example, you might have the following resources where you include author and publisher. And to get the author and publisher of the book, you would just need to make a single get call. So whether or not you need to make multiple calls to get data from multiple resources in REST depends on how the resources are structured. If the resources are separate, then you will need to make multiple calls. If the resources are contained in a single resource, then you can get all of the data in a single call. In the real world, it is more common to have separate resources for title, author, and publisher. This is because these pieces of data are often used independently of each other. For example, you might want to get the list of all books by a particular author without having to get the full details of each book. GraphQL is like a personal librarian in that it allows you to request the exact data you need and in the format you need. You could ask your personal librarian for the title and author of a book in a single request and your personal librarian would be able to return the data in the format you want, be it JSON or XML. Basically, GraphQL is more flexible and efficient because it doesn't require structuring your resources to get data in few calls. In REST, the API exposes a set of resources, each with its own structure and endpoints. And to get data from multiple resources, you need to make multiple requests to different endpoints. And this can be inefficient, especially if the resources are tightly coupled. In GraphQL, you can request any data that is available on the server in a single request. You can also define the structure of the response so that you can only get the data that you need. GraphQL servers can also cache query results, which can reduce the number of round trips between the client and server. And this makes GraphQL more flexible and efficient than REST. Here is an example. In REST, this will return the user object and the post object. However, if you only need the user's name and the post title, you will need to make two requests. One get call for user ID and one get call for post ID. In GraphQL, you need the single query to return a full single response with the user's name and the post title. In REST, the structure of the data is defined by the resources. GraphQL doesn't require you to structure your data in a particular way. In GraphQL, the structure of the data is defined by the schema. This makes GraphQL more flexible and easier to evolve. The schema in GraphQL is a definition of the types of data that are available and how they are related to each other. It is used to validate requests and to generate responses. Here is an example of simple schema. The schema defines two types of data, 
user and post. The user type has two fields, ID and name. The post type has three fields, ID, title and author. The author field on the post type is a reference to user object. This means that a post can only have one author and an author can have multiple posts. You can use the schema to define any type of data that you need. For example, you could define a schema for products, orders and customers. Once you have defined your schema, you can use it to validate requests and to generate responses. For example, if you receive a request to get a post by ID, you can use the schema to validate the request and to generate a response that contains the post data. Here is an example of request to get a post by ID. The schema tells GraphQL that the request is valid and that the response should contain the post title and the author's name. GraphQL will then execute the query and return the following response. The schema is a powerful tool that makes GraphQL more flexible and efficient than REST. It allows you to define any type of data that you need and to validate requests and generate responses in a consistent way. In a GraphQL schema, two fundamental components work together to define the structure and behavior of the API, types and resolvers. Types define the different types of data that can be returned by the API. For example, a GraphQL schema might have types for users, posts and comments. It basically defines the structure of the data that the API can return. For example, the user type defines the structure of a user object, which might include fields for the user's ID, name, and email address. Resolvers are functions that implement the logic of fetching and returning data for each type. When a client sends a query to the API, the GraphQL server uses the schema to validate the query and to determine which resolvers need to be executed. The resolvers are then executed to fetch and return the data for the query. For example, consider the following query. The GraphQL server would first use the schema to validate the query. The schema would tell the server that the query is valid and that the response should contain the user's name. The server would then execute the query by calling the resolver for the user type. The resolver would fetch the user from the database based on their ID and return the user's name. The server would then return the following response to the client. And because GraphQL allows you to define your own schema, it enables you to request data from multiple microservices in a single request, making GraphQL a popular choice for building microservices APIs. So if you have a user microservice and a post microservice, the following query requests data from two microservices. This query will request the user's name from the user microservice and the user's post from the post microservice. The GraphQL server will execute the query and return a single response with all of the data. There are in fact some advanced GraphQL features such as introspection which allows developers to query the GraphQL schema to learn about the types of data that are available. Mutation is another feature in GraphQL that allows developers to create, update and delete data. And because GraphQL allows you to request only the data that you need, it can save you bandwidth and improve performance making GraphQL a good choice for building mobile and single page applications. GraphQL is also a good choice for building real-time data applications. This is because GraphQL allows you to subscribe to changes in the data and receive updates in real time. <laughs> Speaking of subscriptions, subscriptions are a GraphQL feature that allows you to receive updates on changes to the data. For example, you could subscribe to changes in the list of comments on a post. When a new comment is added to the post, you will receive an update. To subscribe to changes in the data, you need to send a subscription query to the GraphQL server. The subscription query will specify which type of data you need to subscribe to. For example, the following subscription query subscribes to changes in the list of comments on a post. When you send this subscription query to the GraphQL server, the server will automatically open a WebSocket connection to your client. The server will then send updates to your client whenever there are changes to the list of comments on the post. Now, I have explained the basics of WebSockets in detail in my system design playlist with some specific use cases. You can use it to build real-time data applications such as chat applications, social media feeds, and dashboards. Here is an example of how you would use subscriptions to build a chat application. Now, again, I have explained system design of a chat app from scratch previously, where I have broken it down into individual components, but to keep it at a high level here, in a chat application, the client is the application that is running on the user's device such as mobile phone or computer. The server is the application that is running on a remote server and is responsible for storing and managing the chat data. The client and server communicate with each other using a network protocol such as HTTP or WebSockets. 
the client sends request to the server and the server sends responses to the client. Here is a simple three-step breakdown of how you could use subscriptions to build a chat application. The client would send a subscription query to subscribe to changes in the list of messages in the chat room. The server would open a WebSocket connection to the client and send updates to the client whenever there are new messages in the chat room. The subscribed client would then display the new messages in the chat window. Subscription allows the client to receive updates on changes to the data in real time. This is why subscriptions are a good fit for building chat application. Note that GraphQL can be both client and the server. A GraphQL client is a library that allows you to send GraphQL queries to GraphQL server and receive the responses. GraphQL clients are available for many different programming languages such as JavaScript, Python, and Java. A GraphQL server is an application that exposes a GraphQL API. GraphQL servers are available for many different programming languages such as JavaScript, Python, and Java. In the context of chat application, the GraphQL server would be responsible for storing and managing the chat data and for processing GraphQL queries from the clients. The GraphQL clients would be responsible for displaying the chat data to the users and for sending GraphQL mutations to the server to create, update, and delete chat messages. GraphQL server and the GraphQL clients are separate components. This makes it possible to use different programming languages for the server and the clients. It also makes it possible to scale the server and the clients independently. Now you should use GraphQL ID or client to generate and execute queries. And this can help you to write and debug queries more easily. GraphQL is an interactive in-browser ID for exploring GraphQL APIs. It allows you to send queries and mutations to GraphQL server and see the results in real time. GraphQL is also a great tool for learning about GraphQL and for debugging your queries. GraphQL Playground is another interactive in-browser ID for GraphQL. It is similar to GraphQL, but it provides some additional features such as the ability to save and share your queries and mutations. If you are new to GraphQL, I recommend using GraphQL or GraphQL Playground to get started. And if you are developing a more complex GraphQL application, you may want to consider using Apollo Studio Cloud-based IDE or one of the other IDEs such as VS Code with GraphQL extensions or IntelliJ which has number of GraphQL plugins. GraphQL is relatively newer API architecture and it is not as well understood as REST. It is also not as widely supported by tools and frameworks. GraphQL is used by many large companies such as Facebook, Twitter, and GitHub. And these companies use GraphQL to power their APIs. Facebook uses GraphQL to power its Graph API, which allows developers to query data about users, pages, and groups. Twitter uses GraphQL to power its API, which allows developers to query about tweets, user, and direct messages. And similarly, GitHub uses GraphQL to power its API, enabling developers to query data about repositories, commits, and issues. Clearly, GraphQL is gaining popularity, and it is likely to become the standard API architecture in the future.